Um, great. So thanks um, to TEDx team for inviting me to speak to you all today. Um, I really appreciate it. And my compliments to the previous speakers, which I really enjoyed. It's been a really fascinating day. So my talk today, I suppose, is building on some of the questions maybe posed by our previous speakers, thinking philosophically about the world of work and our relationship with work, and maybe giving you a few different perspectives to think about it. So I want to open then by asking you this. Work. Don't you just hate it? I know I do. I can't stand it. As I, as I get older, my life feels constantly like I'm just dragged into work at every single opportunity, to the point where I get up, I go to work, I come home, I go to bed. I get up, go to work, come home, go to bed. Life becomes a monotonous series of instances of going to work, coming back from work, such that I can sometimes never tell quite where work begins and work ends. So we might wonder then, well, what is work? Well, it used to be a case that we thought that work, in inverted commas, was your job. So the paid work that you do. However, there are some other forms of work as well, which we've started, begun to think about from the sort of social sciences point of view. You might think, for example, about childcare, caring for relatives. Um, housework is a form of work. Emotional labor, managing the household affairs, keeping a track of things. And all of these are forms of free work, work that we don't get paid for. No employee is paying you for these things to look after the children, to do the housework, to manage the affairs of the house. But they are important forms of work and sort of a drain on each and every one of us. But all of these are, as I say, unformed paid of work, unpaid forms of work that are a vital part of the capitalist economy, without which things would fall apart. To give you another perspective, this very talk I'm giving to you now is a form of unpaid work, in a way. None of us here are paid to do this, and your TEDx team have really worked hard, for free, by the way, to put this event on for you all today. Um, but without which, of course, the whole sort of setup that we have here would fall apart. But, of course, the world is changing. Work is not what it once was. Of course, we've got new technologies, so we've got the likes of the internet, which you'll all be familiar with, smartphones, social media, Web2, for those of you who know what Web2 is, um, things like GPS, sat-navs, those of you who drove here. And then we've got more advanced technologies that are becoming increasingly prevalent in society, so augmented reality. I don't know if anyone here sort of uses any of that, like Google Lens or Pokemon Go, for example. Then you've got VR as well, virtual reality. The list goes on. But what all of these things have served to do over the years is actually bring work into the commute. You can't escape going to, if you travel on a train, for example, to work, you'll see people answering emails on laptops, on their phones. So all, all of these technologies, while they've sort of benefited us, benefited society, you could say, they, they've also served to blur the distinction between home and work, because we're bringing work now onto our commute. I have a colleague sitting at the back who is doing work while sitting here, um, watching this presentation today. So work kind of knows no end. As I say, it's also bringing work into the home, especially in the context of the COVID pandemic. So as I say, we've got this increasing blurring then between home life and work life. But we've also got a blurring between what we might describe as the real world and the virtual world. You're all sitting here, you're watching me in what we might call the real world, but um, when this talk gets put online, I'll be sort of my talk will take a part of the virtual world. There'll be people who watch this talk who have never met me in real life, who have never sat in this room like you're all sitting in here now. And all of this technology is serving to blur our distinction and understanding, not only about our relationship with work, but our relationship with virtual worlds as well. So what we've got then is we've got all these new technologies leading to new ways of working, but also leading to new forms of work. So what forms do these take? Well, creating content. I shared a post about me being here today. That in itself is a form of work. Um, liking, commenting on posts on social media, sharing, retweeting, sending friend requests. These are all forms of work in a sense. So is the um, notion of writing reviews. When we write a review about a product we like on Amazon, we are doing work for Amazon. 
we're also doing work for the product we're writing a review for. If we like a product, we're doing free labor to write a nice review, which will then in turn help sell that product even more. But also playing games can be a form of work, especially those people playing free to play games. Um, as my sister is here, she will um, be able to attest to this. Um, or the games that you buy, a form of work. But then of course, you've got watching ads. And you'll all be familiar with this. Um, if you're watching this um, on social media, you may well be watching an ad before or after this talk. But we do all of this work for free. So I'd like to introduce to you then this concept that I, I'd like you to think about and take away from this talk, is that we are now becoming a part of a new digital workforce. Why do we do it, you might ask. Well, there are many positives to all of this. Um, you might get a certain affinity from interacting with people online. Personal utility, you might benefit from finding information quickly online. Of course, there's also a sense of comfort and immediacy if you're sharing in a lived experience. Anyone who's ever been on Twitter when a, a big TV show's going on and people are responding in real time. There might also be altruism. If someone you know is feeling sad or upset online, you might respond in an altruistic way to them. So you feel that you're doing them a, a sort of a service. You're, you get validated, you feel better about helping people online. But of course there are elements as well, such as curiosity. We're all interested in the world around us. I'm curious to know what the people I went to university with are doing now. So I'm interacting on social media. And of course validation as well, self-validation. I shared um, a post about me being here on uh, Twitter, on Facebook. And that in itself helps validate me, helps me feel more alive as a lecturer in digital marketing because I can show people that I am doing my job. I'm engaging with students, um, with members of the public, with fellow colleagues and professionals. But of course, while I'm, we're doing all this for free, the technology companies are getting an awful lot out of this as well. Firstly, most importantly you might say, they're getting users. They're also getting content. My post about this event today was free work by me, sharing content for all of you to engage with. They didn't create any of that. All they did was provide the platform through which that work is um, consumed. Of course, there's ad revenue as well. And then you've got the data that they get from tracking my posts, my interactions, but also tracking your behaviors and your interactions with the content that I share. This is something called surveillance capitalism, something I, I talk about quite a lot um, in my teaching here at Lancaster. Just to gi give you a phrase here, which I think is quite relevant, this is from uh, often um, quoted to Robert Heinlein, a science fiction author. He, he used the expression, well, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. While social media is free, in a sense, it's also not free, because we're doing all of this, free, all of this work and we're giving away all of this data in exchange for the services we get. There is no such thing as a free lunch. So this leads us then to ask, well, what is the product? And I have a warning for you. You are the product. Each one of you is the product. It's no longer the case that um, you pay for a service, you own the service, uh, you own the product that you paid for. You now actually become a part of the product itself. So this leads us on to the topic of production and consumption. Back in the day, we might have this idea of the cycle between production and consumption. You produce something, someone consumes it. You produce something, someone consumes it. But increasingly, these two separate elements are becoming blurred. Production and consumption are becoming one and the same. And this is a concept known as prosumption. You become a prosumer. So when you go on social media, you're both producing and consuming content at the same time. You are feeding the vicious cycle of production and consumption. So I post on social media, I am consuming social media, at the same time I am producing content for social media. And the same thing applies to work actually. Um, just thinking about my colleague sat at the back. Um, she both produces education in this establishment here, but is also in a sense consuming this same education in a sense that we also have a hand in producing. So again, it's this blurring of boundaries between production and consumption. And this is all part of the changing nature of work. Work itself is evolving. Capitalism is evolving. 
this notion of surveillance capitalism is turning our data into a form of work. You, you all, and I include myself in this, we digital citizens are a new form of workforce in a way. We don't just create the product, we are the product. And so what this system is doing to us now is, is, is essentially designed to extract the maximum value from us, from every inverted commas worker. You may not feel like you're a worker, but you are doing a form of work in this sort of digital world in which you now inhabit, in which we all inhabit. So I, I want to close this talk, we we'll leave you with a thought. Do you know what the scariest thing, to me at least, of this whole process is? And I think it is this. The scariest thing is that all of this is a world completely of our own making. I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much.